Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to format HTML tables using CSS. So in my introduction to HTML series, I showed you how to create tables in basic HTML4 syntax, and I also explained that in the old days, you used to actually format the tables using HTML4, but with HTML5 and the rise of CSS, now everything has moved over to CSS. So basically, you type out all the code in order to create your tables within HTML, but then in order to make those tables look pretty, you actually do all of that in CSS, and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. One of the things that I will tell you is if you are interested in formatting tables, uh, there are a lot of options out there for you. You're, you're going to find this, and a lot of these CSS classes I'm going to say, I'm going to explain a little bit here, but then there, there is an entire world of other things that you can do using CSS, and the same is true with tables. It's actually very interesting all of the different things that you can do with tables in order to make tables look prettier. Uh, so one of the things that you should be thinking about is if you're going to be uh, creating tables for any kind of user interface, think about different ways that the tables might be more useful, useful for your end user and then see if there's something that you can do within CSS uh, to accomplish that. So one of the things I'm going to be showing you today is you can actually hover over a row and then the entire row can turn into a specific color. Uh, so think about that. If you're going to be printing out uh, tables for whatever reason for, for some type of system, and if somebody can simply hover over a row and then that entire row becomes a color, that might make it easier for them to see all that data in the row and be able to discern it from the data in the other rows. So it is very important with all of these classes in CSS to remember that I'm just showing you a little bit. There is a lot more available. So if you're thinking, huh, I wonder if I can do this, you would be surprised in modern CSS, you probably can. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I can show you how to format your tables using CSS. So here we are back at my MacBook Pro that I use as the demonstration system. Um, again, I'm using TextEdit. All you need for these simple coding projects is an ASCII text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. Again, in the Mac world, you can use TextEdit. If you're in the Linux world, you can use Gedit or Vim or Nano, so on and so forth. Uh, for uh, this particular project today, uh, I created two documents. One is the HTML document, table.html. Again, you have to save it as a, either .htm or .html file. And then the style sheet that we're going to be referencing is simply table style uh, CSS. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the HTML document because it's it's relatively simple. Uh, this is one of those times where more or less I simply copy and pasted a couple of tables um, and then I assigned different classes to those tables for those tables to look different. Uh, so for this uh, again we open up with the HTML tag we'd open up with the head tag and then we're going to link here to the table style CSS. This is is the style sheet again here. Uh, you just simply put in the style sheet name if it's in the same directory as the HTML document. If not, make sure to put in the full file path. Again, we're gonna close the head, then we are going to close uh, and then we're going to open the body here and we're going to go down to the first table. So the first table here is this is just a basic table. Um, again, you will notice there is no class here. So this is this is standard HTML for formatting. You're not going to see anything. I just want to show you this as an example. Uh, we have the, the header row here. So we have name, we have age, and we have shirt size. And then we have a number of different essentially users that will show up in this table. So we have Bob, Sue, Tim, Pat, Frank, 12, 11, 13, 10, 3, 14, 20, large, small, medium, small, medium, large, small. So again, when I write out tables like this, especially for, for projects, um, I like to actually write these rows out on a single line simply because it's easy to line up with the header uh, and make sure that I'm typing everything into the appropriate spot. Again, Pro proper proper HTML syntax, this, this should all probably be divided out into their own separate groupings. I simply write this out because it's easier for me to read. And again, when you're dealing with HTML, white space more or less doesn't matter. Uh, I then put a break in here to separate these two these tables. And then we went 
down and again basically a copy and paste so the exact same table but this has a class of basic table so this is going to use a class of basic table to format the same table that we saw up there we're going to go down there's going to be another break we're going to have the exact same table again only this is going to be a class of fancy table fancy table this is going to add some more features and functionality for us uh, then you're going to go down and you're going to close the body and you're going to close the html so with that let's go over take a look at the css and we go here and we can see that the css for this is relatively simple uh, so the first thing that we have is the basic table class so again whenever you're dealing with a class you start with a period basic table and the first thing is is we are, we are going to be assigning something to the entire basic table class so anything within the basic table class we're going to be assigning a property and for that we're going to do border collapse colon and then we're going to say collapse so this is one of the weird things one of the weird things with tables and css is when you're creating borders around all of the different cells within the table it will literally create individual borders for every cell so what that looks like at the end of the day, if you don't collapse the cells, is it actually looks like a double border around all the cells. Because if every cell has its own border, then when you visually look at it, it looks like a double border. So by doing this, the border, uh, the border hyphen collapse, and then say collapse, what you're doing is you're collapsing those double borders into just one single line. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you how that works, but that's why we're doing that here. Then we're going to go down here and then we're going to do for the basic table we are then going to assign the class for the basic table with the table header so the th so basically anything within a th tag what we're going to say is we want it to have a border that is three pixels that is going to be dashed and is going to be red so around all the 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 table headers it's going to have a three pixel dashed border around it then we're going to close that then we're going to go down here basic table and then for the td so the normal cells that are in the border we're going to then have a uh, in the table we're then going to have a border that is one pixel we're going to make that solid and we're going to make that black so with this if you did the previous class where i, I showed you with different types of borders around divisions this could be dashed this could be dotted this could be solid this could be double there's a number of different borders you can put around the cells and and the headers uh, you just plug that in so for here we're doing one pixel solid black then we're going to go down we're going to take a look at the fancy table so again the first thing that we do for fancy table is everything within the fancy table class uh, we are going to collapse that border again we don't want those double borders then we're going to go down and we're going to say for the fancy table for the header for the th comma so we're going to be assigning to both of these both the th and the td so when you're going to be doing this you have to do dot fancy table for th comma and dot fancy table for td so those basically all of these will be assigned to both of those and then we're simply going to say border one pixel solid black and so basically what this means is for the th and the tds you'll just have a black border around all of those then we're going to go down and we're going to do some interesting things again just to show you some examples of different things that you can do and so for fancy table for the th basically for those header the, for the for the headers on the table we're going to do a background hyphen color and we're going to make it pink so it's going to be just that solid but one pixel solid border but for the header everything is going to have a pink background then this is kind of cool this is kind of cool so you, then for the fancy table then we're going to say tr so table row say that's the entire row then you're going to do colon so this all has to be together um, a lot of times white space doesn't matter this is one of those times white space does matter so this actually has to be together if, if, if this isn't together it won't work then you're going to say nth hyphen child so basically this is going to say every however many uh, iterations so we're going to say even so basically for every even row in this table we're going to make the background color and we're going to make it orange so you can make this odd you can make this three you can make this four you can make this two basically so however many rows or however many iterations for this it will just simply be every even row we're just going to make the background color orange 
Then we're going to come down here again, fancy table, TR, table row, colon, hover. So again, all of this is essentially one word. So basically, when you hover over um, a row, then what's going to happen is the background color is then going to turn yellow, right? So the, the header, the background color is going to be pink. The even rows, the background color is going to be orange. And when you hover over a line, again, this is the kind of functionality that now is now built into CSS. Then when you hover over a line, it can be yellow. So with that, let's go. Oh, oops, let me actually pull this up. So um, table.html, double click on this. And so this is now what we're going to be looking at. So uh, what we can see here is this first table up here. So this first table is the HTML4 table without any type of formatting. So this is the table without any type of formatting. Then we go down and we can see this is the basic table that I created. So again, around, uh, around the header, around the TH, we have dotted red uh, border around that. And then around everything else, we have the, the single, the one pixel black line, right? So that's the, the basic. Then we come down to the more complicated table. Again, we can see that the, the, the top line, the top line, the TD line, or the TH line, I'm sorry, that has a pink background. Then we can see here for the nth child even, you can see that those are orange backgrounds. And then when you can see it, when I hover over a particular line now, you can see when I'm hovering over, that line becomes yellow. So again, imagine if this was a rather large table. Imagine uh, if you had, I don't know, 15 columns and then you had 100 records or something like that. Simply being able to hover uh, over one of those rows might make it a lot easier for your users to be able to interpret what's going on. So again, with these colors here, I just made it pink, yellow, and orange just to kind of be garish so that you get the point. But you can make these colors whatever you want. Again, basic gray colors, you know, whatever. Uh, so this is the basic idea of what you do with the tables. Now here, like with a basic table border collapse, uh, let's say if I just simply got rid of that, so I can do file and I can do save just to show you if you get rid of the border collapse. Uh, and then when I go here and I do refresh, see, this is what you get if you don't do the border collapse. Again, that's it's kind of like the weird thing. It's Again, that's the hard part with coding. The hard part with coding is that it gives you exactly what you told it to give you, but that's probably not necessarily what you mean, right? So when you said do a border, so it literally did a border around every TH and TD, but then visually that appears for most of it to then appear to be a double border. So by then by doing this uh, border hyphen collapse and then collapse for the entire class, that's what collapses it down so that you basically see what you see only as a single border. So that's the basic idea of formatting tables within CSS. So that's the basic idea of formatting tables within CSS. Uh, again, there are a lot of different options available for you. I think the cool thing is like when you hover over a row, you can actually have that turn into a different color. Again, with that, with that nth hyphen child, you can actually use that in other things. You can use that for, for P tags and for other things. And basically every so many iterations, uh, it will change the background or do something else, do other some kind of modification. I think that can be a very useful thing. Uh, but this gives you an idea of how you can format the tables. Again, one of the big ones is a very, very, very simple thing, but it really can throw a wrench into what you're doing uh, if you're not really sure what's going on, is that whole border collapse. Um, basically setting. If you don't set the border collapse to actually collapse the borders, you'll get those weird double borders, which again is technically what you're asking the computer to do, but most likely it's not what you want the computer to actually do. So by doing the border collapse, you then collapse those borders into a single border, probably more likely what you're expecting, and then you get a table uh, that, that you're used to. Um, so again, with this, there are a lot of different properties. There are a lot of different values out there uh, for you to play with. Again, think about what you want your table to look like. Kind of, kind of again, do, do a wireframe, actually draw out what you want your table to look like. Then go do a little bit of research, see what properties are available, see what uh, values are available. And then, then you can actually type out the code uh, to turn your idea into an actual website. So as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you at the next one.
If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.